Okay, hey everyone, welcome back to Mission Impact Series with Tracy and Ty. And as you know, this is our series on complicated times with simple solutions. So we talked about legal issues um, when it comes to having simple solutions. We talked about board business when it comes to having simple solutions. And today we're going to be talking about training and experience when it comes to simple solutions. So how do we manage our staff? How do we interact with our board? How do we interact with the community? All of those things. If you have policies and procedures about how you do these things, you have evaluative processes, all of this becomes simple, right? Mm -hmm. Simple solutions. So if this is your first time joining us, my name is Tracy V. Allen. Um, I'm the owner of TVA Consulting Group, where I help change agents, because we're going to just say change agents when we're on Change Agents TV, right? So I help change agents to design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyle that they desire while impacting their communities. Mm -hmm. All of that. My name is Tyler <laughs> Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And Tracy... Keeping it simple when you're talking about management and staff, I'm learning the more that I work with developing organizations that little things like job descriptions oh are foreign. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like, yes. how do I know what I'm supposed to be managing or who I'm supposed to be managing if I don't even know what they're supposed to be doing? Okay, and I'm going to go right back here again um, to the corporate binder. Binder, ma'am. There you go. Right. You don't have to do this that. corporate binder, as you can see, it says TVA Consulting Group on there. The job description of everyone who works for your company should be in this binder. Should be, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's you know, folks are just like, you know, who do I need to have or who do I need to hire? And then they just make it up as they go. No job description. So when you don't have a job description and you're and you're trying to manage a staff or a volunteer or whatever, how do you know? that what you're doing is actually something that's going to be productive and, re and and help you to create the impact that you're trying to create utilizing mm -hmm. this employee or this volunteer because everything that you bring into your business or your nonprofit is supposed to be uh, helping you to get to a certain goal right, right. Helping you to achieve a certain even whether that's a person whether that's a, a product whatever it is it's supposed to help you to, to reach a certain goal so if i'm hiring somebody what is their purpose for my business for my organization and how do I know that we've achieved this purpose, right? If I don't know what, if they don't have a description, <laughs> I'm just hey, you just go to work. Right. And that's what, what makes it simple. If you have a job description, people can always refer back to their job descriptions to see if what they're doing is even in their job description. Is this what I got mm -hmm. hired to get paid for? Um, does it say open-ended and other things, <laughs> you know? And does what you're asking me to do come into the other things? And if somebody's not doing what they're supposed to be doing, you can always pull their job description and said, this is what you you um, applied for. This mm -hmm. is what we hired you to do. And this is what you're not doing. So it helps to um, to um, secure you as the employee as well, employer and both the employee as well. So everybody needs a job descriptions. You also need employee handbooks. Once you're hiring people, you need employee handbooks so that people can refer to their employee handbooks to see how much leave we're going to get. How do we apply for leave? All of the other things that we're talking about can be done if you just keep it simple. Have a systems and processes in place. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you have those systems and processes, things will become easy. It's when you don't have it and then you're trying to um, off the cuff make things up and the rules don't apply to everyone. You create a very tense atmosphere because as much as I know there are employees that say, oh, don't tell the other person what you're getting paid. But if you have this, is that's easy when you're working remotely, maybe. But when you're working and people can stand up in, uh, at the water cooler or go to the cafeteria and then things come up and then I'm complaining about how I can't pay my rent. And you're mm -hmm. like, girl, I'm going on a vacation to Dubai. <laughs> and then you're like, well, wait a minute. How? You are <laughs> Like, right? <laughs> you know, well, you're like, how? And then that conversation starts about mm -hmm. how much I get paid and what I do with my money. And then you're over there going, wait, so you're making $50 an hour for the same job I'm getting paid 30 for? Oh, no, ma'am. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So 
you know, having standard operating operating procedures, having your handbooks, having, you know, everything just in place that your employer, your employees will need to be able to refer to and do their work effectively. And then it helps you when it comes to evaluations too. Mm -hmm. So you can take what it is that you hired them for and create a comprehensive evaluative tool, even letting them know how often they're gonna be evaluated and what they're gonna be evaluated on helps to make people accountable. So mm -hmm. that's how you keep that simple, simple solutions. Mm -hmm. Right. It may seem complicated because I know when people have to start hiring people or bringing on contractors, they're like, oh, my God, they start holding their head. They get start getting migraines. Their stomach starts bubbling because it's like, oh, my gosh, I'm responsible for yeah. someone else's well-being. Mm -hmm. I am responsible right. for whether or not somebody eats. They keep their lights on and it just seems very overwhelming. But if you take a step back and either hire an HR person um full-time, part-time, or even as a consultant, because there are HR people who consult and help them get your systems and processes in place for um, hiring employees and making sure that you're upholding the law. So mm -hmm. I can even tell you a story of myself. When I first started hiring, I didn't even realize I needed a reemployment number. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for the first year that I hired people, I didn't have a reemployment number. Mm -hmm. And then I got a consultant and she was like, girl, where's your reemployment? You need that. Oh, okay. Like it. I mean, I was, like, what? Don't because know, right? I was like, what? I was like, what? Who? <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> you know? And then she was like, right? let me take care of that for you and got everything in place that I needed so that I could be legally and effectively running that portion of my business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to remind even, you know, founders or who, and founders are so quick to, to deem themselves executive director or CEO or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, well, who told you that? Like who hired you to do, to, to be this person or they hired themselves. Up? Yeah. They hired themselves. <laughs> and I, and, and there's no, there's no, I'll be echoing a little bit. There's no paper trail. There's no process of how you were onboarded. There's no application on file that you, mm -hmm. apply. even if, even though you're the founder, when you become employed by this organization, there needs to be a process. You need to have a job description. If you're mm -hmm. an executive director, CEO, or whoever, we need to know what you're doing. Right? Yeah. Who yeah. Puts you there? Even you if you're doing? not a W-2 employee, even if you're a 1099 of the organization at that time, you mm -hmm. still need to have all those things in place. And right now I'm in a situation where I'm asking someone for all of those things and they're looking at me like I have four heads. Like, <laughs> why do I need it? I, this is my, this is my stuff, you, you know? And I'm like, I understand that, but you're also an employee of the organization. You're not, you're getting a check. So just the same things like fill out an employee application, fill out this, fill out that. And they're like, what, why? I don't want to do it. And I was just like, but you have to do it. I want to do it. You hired me for compliance reasons. You hired me to manage your grant and keep you compliant. And these are the compliance things. If you ever get audited, these are the things that you're going to need to present an audit. You can't call me back when you get audited to ask me to help you to put it together. I'm helping you to put it together now so that if it should ever happen, you already have the playbook and you can just say, here you go. Here's everything that we did. Here's everything that we have. These are all the people who work for us, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Yeah. And I don't want to do it. It's not, oh, it's not an acceptable. Yeah. People like to tell you they're not doing stuff. <laughs> I'm like, well, then you're wasting your money. You're paying me for nothing. You don't want to do it? Come yeah. on now. You got to do it. That's not, we're not going to take Sometimes it's not, I don't want to do it. Sometimes I'm not doing mm -hmm. it. I've been told that. I'm not, not doing it. it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, oh, yeah. and that's why you always have to have a clause in your um, contract saying that you can terminate the client as well, because mm -hmm. it is counterproductive for us to be working together if you are not going to do what's necessary to get the job done. Okay. Yeah. So training and experience, even though you bring someone onto your job, let's talk about that quickly. Um, and the person has been an accountant, let's say an accountant has been an accountant for X amount of, maybe that's not a good one. Cause I think all accounting softwares are generally the same. Um, but they may not raise huh? Fundraising, even accounting. I mean, they may, yeah, even accounting, everybody has a different system of how they do things. 
-hmm. right? The way how you did things over there isn't necessarily the way I do things here. Now, you may need to teach me some things coming in, but then I may need to teach you some things coming in as well, because, you know, maybe the way you deposit money or the way you do accounts payable and receivable, we do it a slightly different. It doesn't mean that we're doing it wrong. It's just that we do it differently, right? So you can't hire people and just expect them to come in and just start working. You have to have a training period. And a lot of people don't realize that. They think because they hire an expert that the person should just come in, hit the ground work running. They should never have to tell the person anything. Mm -hmm. You're setting yourself and you're setting that person up for failure. And that's where people get stressed out initially when they come on the job. And then you have a high turnover rate because then they're gone, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's like, this is not going to work. So having training, training and experience go together. They're not mutually exclusive from one another. In the last session, you mentioned board and board training, right? And mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, this kind of plays right along with that, where people get upset with their boards and they go, oh, they're not doing any work. They're not doing this. Mm -hmm. Have you provided any training for them? Do they know what they're supposed to do? Do they know what you are expecting from them? Have you shown them mm -hmm. what it is they're supposed to be doing? You know, a lot of that, you, you can save a lot of time and a lot of stress by just implementing trainings. Um, to show people what they're supposed to be doing. Right. Because, you know, I have a, um, a, the um, staffing company as well. And I, I we have people who come and look for virtual assistants on a regular basis mm -hmm. to do things for them. And the first thing that they say is, oh, I'm hiring this person because I don't want to do this or I don't have the time to train anybody. So this person needs to know how to do X, Y, Z again. And that's like a red flag for me because I can't promise you that. The yes, the person knows how to do X, Y, Z. But when they come to your business, you do things a particular way. So you still need to take time to train them. If you do not have time to train somebody, then it's not the time to hire somebody. Right. You got to do it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you you got to do it yourself, right? It's like, yeah. I'm going to hire a virtual assistant to build me a house. Mm -hmm. Look, girl, that's, <laughs> I got to do it myself because right. you, you have to lay out, and again, back to your, your SOP. And, and, and things like that, where you have to have these things kind of laid out. You know, if we were, were talk, I talk to people about logic models, you do too. Um, the plan and the processes for things. You mm -hmm. have to have this stuff laid out. So if somebody comes in to your business or your organization, they can pick up something and they go, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. Right. An operations manual. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing. So, and I mean, I think we are all guilty of not having those done. Not having those done. So what I've started doing, um, because the step-by-step -step writing out thing just does, ugh, I have enough writing to do when I'm writing grants, proposals, mm -hmm. and other things. I'm not trying to write down step-by-step -step how I do something. So mm -hmm. what I've started doing is screen recording myself, doing it and talking about it as I'm going through the process. And then mm -hmm. I have that in a file. So this is how you do XYZ in Canva. This is how you you get into instrumental. This is how you get into whatever, whatever. This is how you search for what. And I have those videos broken down in categories. Yeah. But whether you have it in a written form or you have it in video form, you do need to have some uh, an operations manual that teaches people. When you don't, when you're saying I don't have time to train, you've already created the training materials. Yeah. So now you just need to give it give them access to it so that they can hit the ground running. And I had to think, I had to stay conscious of that. So I was like, okay, well, I remember. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, okay, yeah. so you know now. Like, yeah. you, Cause you kept telling me, I don't have let time me, for that. Let me, let, me, let me just record, let me just put on Loom and record the thing mm -hmm. and then give it to them. Now yeah. they got a whole library of stuff. Yeah. So they don't even have to bother me. And I don't really know. Because you already explained it to them. And anytime they forget anything, they just have to press press record and hear Ty tell it to them again. <laughs> Instead of having to email you or call you or... Like, you, you remember me struggling with that. I was like, I ain't got oh, yes, I really remember. And I kept telling you, Ty, just do a video. Ty, just do a video. And you're like, I don't have time for that. I said, you have to have time for one or the other. You're either going to take her and physically train her, or yeah. you're going to do the video so she can watch it. Right? Like, oh. <laughs> and be frustrated and complain about it. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. I said, you keep telling me the same thing over and over. You have got to create the training video. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> You'll be so proud of me because they have a whole lever sitting back That's there. great. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's kind of it when it comes to complicated times and simple solutions When it, in regards to training and experience. You have got to train your people, create operating manuals, create SOPs, and that will give you a simple solution to things that can become a huge, huge issue later on. All right. All right. Until next time. Oh, the next one, we're going to be talking about strategy at play, which kind of pulls all of these elements together. So come back for the next one, which is strategy at play. Until next time. Bye, everyone.